Hey there, I'm uh, Matze Adoho and I work as a product manager and head of support at Assimilate. And we recently released Scratch version 9. And um, yeah, what's new about Scratch version 9? Uh, since it's a very broad tool, kind of the Swiss army knife of post-production, we had like four key focus points. One was the UI, which we significantly updated. So now when you open up Scratch, you will find those four tabs at the bottom. Construct tab, where you load, conform, etc. Um, the editing tab, color fix tab, color fix because it does much more than just color. Um, and the render tab where you can uh, build your output tree with encoder nodes and the likes. The second uh, key focus point was uh, expanding our finishing tool set. Mainly we added uh, support for Autodesk Matchbox shaders, which kind of expands the scratch tool set by 200 new effects and tools that you can use for beauty work for client attempt compositing, even for dailies work. Um, there's a free collection of shaders available on the logic-matchbook.org um, and feel free to download those and maybe contribute to that collection. Uh, the other thing uh, that we implemented was uh, scripts for After Effects and Nuke um, because you can do an amazing amount of compositing in Scratch and for most of it it's actually real time. However, it does not replace a dedicated compositor. So what you want to do is send shots to your favorite compositing app. And um, so we thought, OK, uh, let's not force our own compositing tool set down on our users, but allow them to work uh, in their app of choice and make going there and back as easy as possible. So we are shipping those scripts uh, with Scratch version 9. Um, and with a single click, you can send shots to Nuke and After Effects and fetch them back. Uh, third key focus point was dailies. Uh, we expanded our dailies toolset, most notably with support for LTC, linear timecode. So if you're using a 10 tackle sync box or something like that to record LTC into your files, Scratch can detect this LTC in either video or audio files and use that timecode to sync and write out new offline files. Um, we also added a lot of little features like a scene take updater, like user definable default shot notes. Um, and overall, we did a complete makeover in our file IO. So playback and transcoding speed are significantly higher in version 9. Um, and not only faster, but they also give greater color accuracy. And yeah, I think we've done a pretty amazing job on uh, our file readers. Key focus point number four is support for VR 180 stereo uh, in live production as well as uh, post-production. So we can now live stream in and out of Scratch uh, uh, 180 degree VR stereo stream um, and also do all the color grading and compositing in between. Um, along with that, uh, obviously we detect the mesh metadata to de-warp the image correctly and all the things that go along with that. Um, well, so these were the four key focus points and to top it all off, we released Scratch Play Pro, uh, our new QC and review tool. Um, Play Pro now ships with SDI output, with headset support for VR footage, uh, with quality check and HDR reporting, but also it is a basic transcoder. You can export H.264 up until 8K you can uh, export H65 up until 12 bit, and you can export Apple licensed ProRes, and you can even do that on Windows. All that for 19 bucks a month. That's pretty much it for Scratch version 9. Feel free to go to our website and download.